Well, thank you for the opportunity uh, to share the research regarding the self-healing smart grid. And uh, thanks everyone for joining. So in the next 10 minutes, I want to uh, uh, hopefully uh, by, by the end, you, you have a little bit better understanding uh, more about the smart grid. I know from several faculty members from the RISIS cluster or the power group have talked about different aspects of how system or smart grids, renewable integration. Today, I want to focus on a, a little bit different aspect uh, on the resilience, security, but more on the self-healing capability. Um, I'm associate professor from the EC department. I'm also directing the Siemens Digital Lab and also part uh, member of the RISIS cluster. Um, I got my PhD from Iowa State in 2011, and after that, I spent two years uh, working in industry, uh, a software company design and power system operation tools for uh, power utility. And then I worked two years in South Dakota as faculty member and I joined the UCF 2015. Um, in the last five years at UCF, and my majority focus on the teaching is the, on the power system related courses. We are including set of the undergrad course um, and as well as the graduate course. And, and also supervising PhD um, and undergrad students. And I, I want to uh, um, commend the, the activity at UCF uh, promotes the undergrad research opportunities and provides a, a very good pipeline for, especially for the engineering um, students to recruit to the grad school. And I'm also uh, um, faculty advisor of the Power and Energy Society of IEEE. We have a UCF student chapter established two years ago. And we have very uh, active student members that uh, have also achievements to rank the uh, number one of the region one to seven of the IEEE uh, in terms of their activities. Uh, my research uh, mainly focuses on power system and, and smart grid. Particularly, I'm interested in three aspects. First one is the resilience. And to look at that, if you have a, a big event happen to the power grid, how you, if you lose a, a significant part of the services, how you bring them back and how it provides self-healing capability. And also look at a security aspect. Um, if you have the cyber attacks, um, how to um, prevent that happen, but also, also if really some, some events happen, how you recover that. Um, also for the renewable integrations and look at both the, uh, the power plant, uh, uh, wind farms, uh, solar farms, but also the distributed energy resources. And research has been funded both by a uh, federal agency as well as the power industry um, and to look at the different aspects, and today I'm going to share three projects with you. Um, and also directing the Siemens Digital Grid Lab is the lab uh, under the collaboration with the long-term uh, uh, collaboration between you at the Siemens, and the lab is uh, established 2017. And at the end of today's presentation, I'm going to show you a little bit more um, capability of the lab as well as the, maybe the uh, capabilities for the collaboration with uh, interesting uh, faculty members. Um, so my motivation for research and teaching, as well as the, the title for today's talk, is the smart uh, self-healing smart grid. And of course, first is what is the self-healing? Since my son has a big fan of the superheroes, so he collects uh, mo more than two dozens of the, the, the twelve figures of superhero. So basically, we have a super strong, or super fast, but most of the fascinating are the super healers. So from, from this the, um, cartoon figures to the engineering, of course, the, now we have this advanced materials to provide the self-healing capability. Uh, but more interest for us is the, in the complex system, uh, how in the complex system, especially power, power grid, and we can provide the, um, the resilient and, uh, and secure system. So the self-healing essentially is, is not just one stage, it, it's really um, in a multiple stage when some significant event happens, if you know that's gonna happen, how you uh, do the pre-processing resource allocation, and when during the event happen, how you absorb the, the heat and to let the system not collapse. And also after the event happens, how you quickly recover the system and to endure the impact from the event. So essentially that's the, as you can see that the different stages and what my research focuses on is on the recovery side. So, which is you try all your best, but still the event happened to the system, some uh, um, unavoidable forced um, and, and you, you have a damage to the grid, how you bring them back. Um, so, and, and also on a security aspect, uh, also have a, a self-healing capability with the identification, protection, detection, responding and, and a recovery. Um, so this self-healing capability in, in a complex uh, grid and specific application power system. Um, so we know the power grid has been the infrastructure built more than a half century ago. 
although we have uh, uh, many, many billion dollar investment to enhance the smart grid capabilities, still there's the, something that you cannot stop. For example, the uh, 2013 Super Bowl 47. Uh, interestingly, before that, the local utility in, in Louisiana has spent uh, a lot of in- investment to build the infrastructure to avoid any blackout happen, but it just do. It still happened because the calculation error of the relay protection. So, which meaning there's something that we still cannot avoid that. And also 2003, the, the cascading failure caused by the operation issues uh, bring the Northeast the blackout. And in Florida, we always, uh, uh, this year we're lucky, but usually we have the hurricane happen and we lost uh, a tremendous service to the customer as well as the cyber attacks. Um, then what we can do in considering the in- critical infrastructure and, and also their significant uh, uh, importance to serve the electricity 24-7. So from my perspective, what I do is first by using advanced uh, control optimization techniques to provide uh, automatic restoration design support tool that can help system operators to make decisions uh, while right now the, uh, the current practice is really just uh, uh, based on experience to to, to make the decision making. And also we talk about a lot of renewable in the system. However, most of them when we talk about is based on you have a healthy system, you have a strong support, but how you can use all of those uh, smart grid technologies when you do not have a strong grid to support you. And, and also in the distribution side, we have many sensors, IoT, smart communication infrastructure in the distribution grid and how you can use that to provide the, uh, reconfiguration, automation and self healing. And in the end, and using the AI or machine learning methods, you can provide a better situation of wellness and a better protect of the system. And also another important on my research is to test when you have a theoretical development, you test in both simulation as well as the hardware. In the end, you want to work with public utility to see what you can bring uh, to their uh, services. The next uh, three topics uh, projects I want to talk about is uh, first look at the transmission high voltage level, which is the typically uh, we have the bulk power system, high voltage, you have the, the long transmission line connecting to the power plant to the services. So for this, uh, uh, an SF funded project we're looking at is the first you have um, a variety of different type of the dynamic uh, system components and each one have a different capabilities, different phenomena, how you can put them in one integrated framework and by um, in order to provide the holistic solutions that can in- enhance system resilience, but in the same time, you ensure the reliability. Um, and, and also, in, uh, as I mentioned, in the same time, how we can harness the different smart grid technologies from large-scale wind farm, uh, PV farms, and uh, to the electric vehicle distributed in, in the power system, and how you can take advantage of this uh, capability, of, which is the existing uh, um, practice is really as I mentioned before, is can, you have a strong grid to support you. However, when you have a weak grid or even you do not have a grid, how you can use them, you have a better control. A lot of current practice in utilities, you do not want to use them at the beginning. Uh, as we talk about increased penetration of renewables and, and you just cannot avoid them. And I know there's a study talk about 100% of renewable penetration, even that's the case. Right now, the policy is you do not use any of them to in the early stage of the recovery, then that has to be changed and how we can do it. So the research is provide initial studies for them to provide the uh, feasibility study, how we can have using the better control monitoring to enhance uh, harnessing strategy of those smart, smart grid technologies are listed here. A techno- the technical approach most of is optimization based and, and the major challenge is how to address the different type of uncertainty from a variety of different renewable is one aspect, but including human behaviors and that's a different type of uncertainty and how you include human decision making in the this recovery process. That's also challenging. In terms of outputs, um, I'm, I'm co-authored, co-authored one book on this the restoration aspect as well as the patents and the publications. Um, and also working with utilities and have the commercial tool by with APRI that already has been used by power utilities. The second project is the, um, funded by DOE, which is looking at the distribution system. So the different from the distribution to transmission first is uh, uh, just a, a large number of the small, smart distributed devices in the grid and how you can design the distributed algorithm that you can scale up for the real-time decision making for the large scale system. And there's a collaborator at the UCF and the two faculty from the RISIS cluster and as well as the national labs and industry. 
And what we're looking at here is the from different from transmission focus really is on stability, security, as well as the uncertainty here is more distributed, how you can have the distributed algorithm that you can take care of the um, the millions of devices in a grid. So there's a so different uh, uh, distributed optimization technique we try to apply here try to, uh, to look at that, how you can coordinate those the Alexa devices together with the smart uh, um, equipment and together to recover the system. Uh, what we do in this project is uh, we implement on a large scale system and are still collaborating with the power industry to develop open source platform that can be a disseminated result to the community that also interesting researchers uh, can also take advantage of this uh, open source platform. And the last result is to looking at the, um, when we have a transmission distribution, in reality, those system operators have the limited information exchange considering the ownership and also the practical data change in the real time. And how you look at that coordination and provide using, since there's a lot of data there, what you can to use the data-driven and uh, machine learning-based uh, approaches to look at that, what you can help. While you have a physical modeling-based approach, how about those the data-driven learning methods that can provide the better support? And this is industry supports the project, and by we're looking at is how you can um, provide aggregated data to look at if you certain uh, fault event happened, how the dynamic system is going to provide it. And the outcome of this uh, the project is the first is uh, still with the power industry, and which is already have this uh, um, a document with the NERC, which is the North American Electric Research Co uh, um, Constitute, to look at that. How does the uh, provide the um, different modeling technique for utility to consider for their operation? In the meantime, the Department of Energy uh, have the open source framework and has been used by many researchers. While because the power system have uh, many multidisciplinary research and a different the simulation platform, how to integrate together. That's the, we also contribute uh, enhance that with the machine learning algorithm. And and um, uh, in terms of the infrastructure at UCF, we have a Siemens Digital Lab. We have we have a Siemens microgrid management system. What we do is we model the UCF main campus. Uh, in the software simulation and then import into the uh, industry uh, uh, scheduling softwares and we try to provide the feasibility study for different operation uh, scenarios. In the same time, we have the hardware in the loop test bed. And this hardware in the loop bed is based on a similar link, which is you're not re restricted only to power system, but you can do many other systems that as long as you do a similar link uh, model, then you can put into this the platform, and if you have a physical devices, you can do hardware in a loop testing. And also, we have a project in collaboration with Duke Energy, led by the Dr. Chu, and involved, and also collaborated with Tom Dimitrovsky to look at how the um, the battery technology that uh, can help uh, power grid with the physical devices. Um, as I mentioned, there's another seven labs that are coming from the RISIS clusters, and there's uh, uh, through the website, you can find the many different aspects that we're trying to, while we're doing a lot of simulations, we also provide test sets that can not only validate and demonstrate research outcomes, but provide the platform for students uh, to get their hands on while a lot of simulation has been dominated in power system education. Uh, in terms of the uh, next steps, there's uh, still along the um, three main topics I'm doing, there's uh, still many remaining questions to be answered. Um, starting from the natural disaster, which is the uh, the timing uh, topics for the state of Florida, and there are so many um, uh, natural disaster oriented to the um, topics that we can still looking at, and and also I'm working with the national lab to look at the value of resilience. Uh, while we always wanted to provide service back, but the, in the future when you want to make investment to enhance resilience. You want to put the uh, dollar value of that uh, with the financial tools for the planning or the um, hardening aspect. Cybersecurity, which we're looking at, power system, as I mentioned, they have integration with many other critical infrastructures. For cyber physical systems, there's a lot of ITOT issues. Uh, while we need to combine uh, expertise from both the computer science, computer engineering, uh, to the ECE aspect. Renewable integration, as I mentioned, solar wind has been the dominant interest for a long time. Now they have a, a grand challenge for the storage, hydrogen fuel cell, and always the, those are new technologies, how that will impact the power grid, not only in the real time operational control, but in the long time planning, how what's the trend in the future? That's also something we're looking at. 
in the end, uh, I know at UCF we have a different groups looking at the interdependent accretor infrastructure. From my aspect, it's really how we can model interdependency in a reasonable way, but also considering topological, but also dynamics from a different system that it can help to both the planning as well as operation and control. Yeah, so uh, um, that's all uh, I want to share, and thank you to all the sponsors from the agency collaboration.